Welcome back to Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live for yet another new series in 2017. It's the BSRHub.com Formula Renault series in association with the Apex Racing League. Hello everybody, my name is Andrew Woodhouse and I'm once again joined by Adam Bath and iRacing World Championship driver Alex Simpson for this one. And Alex, you had a massive hand in getting this one organised. What a season we're in for here. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic season. Um, so much up for grabs. I mean, let's just forget about the prize money for the moment and just go on about this series because um, we've got 40, 42 cars out there today and uh, four races tonight, so three reverse grids, eight lap races, just pure sprint, high adrenaline fun. That is what we've got here. And, um, oh yeah, there's about 35 grand worth of cash and prizes to be won at the end of this as well. There's cash, there's hardware prizes, um, the final round of the season, of course, that's where everybody wants to get to in the showdown, Adam, because that will be taking place at the Nürburgring. That's going to be a fantastic experience, not just for the drivers, but for us as well. Uh, yeah, we were commentating on a race a good 15 or 16 hours ago, and now we cap off Tuesday with a brand new series such as this. And yeah, plenty of excitement and intrigue going into this series. And yeah, who's going to be in the showdown and who's going to be coming out on top in the Nürburgring in about September, October time? Those of you who've watched the BSRTC before, and even those who haven't, don't worry. We'll be able to run down everything about the series for you over the next... Um, over the next couple of hours it's basically the same format as the british sim races touring car championship we've got four races tonight each race will be about 15 minutes in length um and points will be given to everybody who finishes either on the lead lap or one lap down the series will run from now until until september is when the final round will be and um, alex we know having been in the BSRTC fold for a good three years now that uh, it's a long old season you've got to make it to the end in order to give, have a chance I know it's the old cliche isn't it yeah exactly we saw I um, mean perfect example as uh, we just take a quick look at some uh, some action um, through qualifying we saw last season Wojciech Savidovic in the BSR touring car pro series of course relentless we're putting in those points and uh, ended out, um, you know, um, champion. But, of course, um, Stelian Chepilevsky was overall points winner going into the showdown as well. So, you know, um, there's different approaches that you can do it. Uh, Stelian, you know, just even more relentless, I guess, than, uh, than, than uh, Wodge. They're whacking those points in, just points after points after points, and got himself uh, top. And, um, of course, the more podiums that you get, they give you a boost for the points because the points get reset for the final seven rounds of the season um, but what you do is you take in your bonus points so any podiums that you've got will get you a will get you a uh, a podium uh, a boost so you get more for first than you do second and and then of course for third so um, so really right now the drivers are just trying to get into that showdown and get as many podiums as they possibly can get in both categories amateur and pro let's not forget that there's amateur competition out there as well this isn't just about the fastest driver um, we have a, we have a great am um, category this season and uh, there's lots of lots of goodies up for grabs for them as well yeah indeed and um, just to give you an idea about the prize fund we did mention it around £35,000 in total. Um, the pro team gets the largest prize, £3,000 for first place, second gets £1,500 and third gets £750. And then the amateur teams, they're fighting for big money as well. First place is £2,000, second is £1,000 and third is £500. And then in the Drivers' Championship, the individual glory where that lies, £2,500 for the driver's champion, £1,000 for second and £500 for third. And then the AM Drivers' Championship as well, £1,500 for the winner of that, £500 for second and £250 for third. And there is £100 for the safest driver, which um, it's not always easy to be safe in these sort of series, Adam, but I'm sure we'll see a little bit more, um, it'll be a little bit cleaner in this than it will be in the touring cards, I reckon. 
Yeah, you can't really get your elbows out in these cars without it being quite dangerous. So uh, we'll be interesting to see who comes out on top in that. Usually some names we saw uh, when we, in the other series that we've done with the safest driver, usually the likes of David Baker, Ash Blake Hood also seems to be hanging around there as well. See if they can transfer that over to the safest driver for this season. And yeah, 100 pounds, that's still pretty good going just to keep it, the car clean uh, throughout the whole season. Let's, um, let's talk a little bit about the course that we're running on here today. Um, Alex was talking to a few of the drivers excuse me, in the, um, in the Rikmatek series last night about it. And uh, Sebring International Raceway, it's one that you like. I know it's bumpy, it's twisty, but it's very traditional and very historic as well. Yeah, I love this place. Um, you can get into such a good rhythm around here. Um, these little runners are very, very low to the ground, so the guys are going to have to deal with those bumps in quite a big way. Um, I think, in a, in a sense, they're glad that it's just eight lap races, you know, because uh, I imagine, um, you know, doing like a, a sort of like a 30 lap sort of hour long race around here would be an absolute killer. I know it's going to add up over the night, but of course they get little breaks, but I'm sure they're going to love this. Good opportunity for overtaking. Um, the Renault does get a bit of push around this sort of area of the track that we're looking now, Oscar. Obviously in the draft um, on his qualifying lap. But as you can see, there is quite a bit of draft with these cars once you get to about that half a second. So coming into Sunset Bend, there's definitely going to be opportunity for overtaking down into Turn 1 and possibly into uh, the two hairpins as well. So could be some great racing tonight. Yeah, I'm sure we'll see some great action as um, a couple of drivers just coming across then to finish the qualifying. Oscar Mangan, what did he do? He goes fifth with a 157.660. Any other improvements there? We saw um, Josh Thompson just going across. But he, his lap was invalid. I think everyone else has pretty much finished. It might just be Kip Stevens, actually. Let's see how whether he attacks the final corner or not. That's Carrying a fair bit of speed through Ooh. there. Yeah, slides the car through the final corner ah, there, and that's just abandoned his lap. He'll be going to the pits. He'll be starting in 38th. Yeah, two times BSRTC champion in 38th place. Adam, if you could take us through the starting grid then for round one 2017 in the BSR Formula Renault. Okay, so Samuel LeBaire, familiar face to those of you that watch coverage of the iRacing Road Pro Series. He's going to be starting on pole position for the first race of the season. Marcel van Luzenold starting on the front row with him. Big name there. Chen Bolok Bassi, another big name. iRacing Road Pro Series driver as well. He's going to be starting in third with Antoine Heglin starting in fourth. Oscar Mangan, another Road Pro Series driver starting in fifth with Pete Berryman starting in sixth. World Championship Grand Prix Series driver there. Jack Keefley starting in seventh. Uh, Pashali Sjerge starting in eighth. Road Pro Series driver there. And uh, Tangai uh, Pedrazzoli starting in ninth with David Baker, BSRTC champion, starting in 10th position. 11th, Ash Sutton, Jack Sears Trophy winner in the Dunlop MSA British Touring Car Championship. 12th, James Nash, not the touring car driver, uh, but James Nash nonetheless. Uh, Catalan Grau starting in 13th with David Weiss in 14th. John Godfrey starting in 15th with Michael Hall and Matt Bunn. Two CQR drivers starting in 16th and 17th respectively. Matthias Sponholt starting in 18th with Ash Blake Hood in 19th for Team Mad. And 20th in the Apex Academy car is uh, Josh Thompson. Lawrence de Rick starting in 21st place with Christian Rose 22nd. 23rd for Jos Honig with Paul Denton 24th. Patrick Bolster 25th with Stephen Baxter in 26th. Mark Pickford in 27th. Marcel Frisch in 28th. Uh, John uh, Mutchinson starting in 29th. Tom Depke starting in 30th. 31st Ralph Cullinan with Pierre Minier starting in 32nd. Evan Balthazar starting in 33rd with Joseph Newman 34th, 35th Rene Osterkamp, 36th Alan Morgan, Simon Hodge 37th, two-time BSRTC champion Kip Stevens in 38th, 39th Nathan Davis, want to watch them moving his way through the field, 40th Alan Mitchell and then the cars are in set of time and qualifying Daniel McCauley and in 42nd place it is going to be George Ratchis. Worth pointing out that the guys only had one car so they made a mistake in qualifying, they couldn't reset. That was the qualifying done, which is why some haven't been able to get times in as well. And it's open qualifying as well, as we saw there, so very difficult to find that clear uh, track. So some of the quickest guys in, uh, in practice, of course, have struggled a little bit because they uh, just couldn't find that clear bit of track. So there's a, lot to, uh, there's a lot of challenges out there in the BSR. It's not just as straightforward as the, uh, as the open series. 
a clear tracks at a premium, I think, in this series, as it is in the other the other ones as well. Okay, then, most of the drivers lining up on the grid. Uh, this race brought to you by Apex Racing TV and Precision Sim Engineering. It's the iRacing MSA BSR Formula Renault Series, presented by the Apex Racing League. And Sebring International Raceway is the site for rounds one to four of the season. The revs are rising then. 42 Green Formula light, Renaults ready to tackle Sebring. Green light is on, 2017 is underway. And Martin Van Luzenod got the jump on Samuel Lebeck. Can he get ahead of the pole sitter into the first corner? He can. Martin Van Luzenod from Holland takes the lead. For Apex Race to the UK, Liber is second. And is that Antoine Higla into third place, head of Cembo Lukbasi? Oh, a little bit of carnage going into uh, the first left-hander. Oh, everybody's around. Seemed to do a quick 360 and carry on, so... Oh, Sutton. Sutton's lost it. Lost a lot of time there as Ash Sutton. He's going to get going again, but you can see he's going to lose a ton of positions as a result of that mistake as we head towards the, the, the hairpin and probably the slowest part on the circuit for the first time. Cold tyres, of course, morning conditions here. So the way the BSR works, we have morning, two afternoons, and then one late afternoon race. And if you drove this Renault, you'll know that in those morning conditions, this car is tricky as hell to drive for that first lap. So um, we've only got eight laps, so it's really light on fuel. It's not like a, a big tank of fuel to try and stabilise the car as well. So they're going to dance this car around for the first lap and a half here. Sussan's off again, and oh, that's a huge one. Oh, my word, we've got four cars, five, six, six cars off. Oh, and Sutton, oh, nearly reverses back into the field. We've got one car over. That might be, uh, that's probably uh, Nathan Tom uh, jo jo Thompson, I think. So, uh, yeah, big crash there. I can't see who was involved in that. Someone's beached as well, unfortunately. Josh Thompson was involved. Uh, Ashley Blakehood, Alan Morgan. Sutton, of course. Tom Depke. Quite a few drivers biting the dust on lap one. Pretty wide down the back straight towards the final corner. James Nash, Michael Hall and uh, David Baker all, all in the mix here going into the final corner. Baker uh, is going to fall behind Michael Hall here. Two teammates, CQR club drivers, at least what it says on my screen anyway. They're going to go side by side through the first corner to complete the first lap. Sorry, I'm having some issues here. Oh, crash in the final corner as well. Someone just got onto the grass, got sideways. Don't think they've collected anyone. Seem to be okay. Baker looks like he's got some damage on his rear wing as well. He's got his teammate just ahead of him, Matthew Bunn. James Nash, John Godfrey having a good little battle as oh. well. Oh, car off in turn one. I don't know who it is because uh, my cameras are appalling here. I think it might be uh, Pickford for driving for ProSim. I don't know how he lost it into turn one. Was it through... Was it on his own or was it through contact? No, I think he goes through the first corner, back steps away from him and he loops his Formula Renault around. Thankfully, no one hits him. Some cars had to take evasive action, but Pickford's now in 34th place. Looks like uh, Alan Morgan must have retired back to the pits. Martin Van Luzenor trying to uh, break away here. LeBaire in second. Higlin, he's a countryman in third. Jim bullock -Bassi for um, Radicals Online. Currently in fourth, these guys, there's nothing between them right now. Jack Keithley just dropping back a little bit. He's got Peter Berriman having a little look on him right now. We're going around the outside as we head towards the final sector of the lap up the inside. Goes, goes, uh, goes, goes uh, Pete Berriman and he's through and that's Berriman into sixth place. Will uh, the car of Jack Keithley lose any positions uh, through the final sector of the lap? Keithley driving for... Uh, Faker Simsport Europe with Oscar Mangan behind him driving for Apex Racing UK. Bashali Zerge is also racing under the Apex Racing UK banner. And just in front of them, side by side between uh, Samuel Lebert and Antoine Heglin. It looks like Heglin's going to take that second place. The Frenchman round the outside. There's just enough track for the Apex Racing UK car to get by. Two Apex Racing UK cars actually battling as they come across the line. Up the inside is, uh, here comes... Oh, LeBaire wide. Oh, crash into the wall. Jack Keefley's gone in a big way. He's lost the rear wing. 
He was trying to go around the outside of what looks like Oscar Mangan going through turn one. And, oh, there was contact, I think, with the, with the rear of Oscar Mangan's car. And it speared uh, Jack Keefley's car off into the tyre wall. Got a little bit of a uh, replay coming up here. Let's see exactly what happened. Chopping and changing positions ahead. Just uh, different lines going through there. Like I say, Oscar just tracked out a little bit. I don't know if he knew that Jack was there, but ended up forcing him out. I think that one will go to the stewards because it uh, didn't quite leave him enough room. And uh, yeah, Jack will be a little bit upset with that one, I'm sure. Samuel LeBear is now in third with uh, Chembal at Bassi in fourth place. Fifth, Pete Berryman now. Sixth is uh, Pashali Zerges, who's got Oscar Mangan for company. And then we've got uh, Tangai Pedrazzoli in uh, ninth place. Matt Bunn, a bit of a way behind these guys, but he has had a good race so far, up eight positions. Oh, sorry, guys, I'm having a look at a good little battle here as well. Patrick, um, Patrick Bolster and James Nash just um, going at it. They've got Stephen Baxter and Nathan Davis right behind it. Great little gaggle. Someone's just gone off on a little bit wide. Nash drops down to 18th place. That's driving for Faker Simsport Europe, uh, and another problem there for that team. They had, uh, they had uh, Keithley off in the wall just a few moments ago, and yeah, James Nash going off through that second half of the lap. Behind him, he's got uh, Kevin Balfazar, who's uh, worked his way through the field nicely at 14 positions, and Ralph Cullinan also behind him as well in 20th place, who's gained 11 positions during the race. So guys making their way through the field nicely. Davis just got Baxter, and Baxter um, got the better exit and um, gets that position back. Those two, I think, are going to go at it once again. And uh, David down to the inside, running as a uh, privateer in, um, in this one. But uh, thank you for uh, representing with our Apex Racing Simulators livery. Hello, David Baker's, uh, well, he's got an Apex Academy livery on his car, but it says on the screen that he is a CQR club driver. So, um, yeah, still endorsing the Apex banner as Davis and Baxter continue their battle through turn one, running out wide. This might allow uh, Rose a, an opportunity in his CQR club car to get a position here. Very close. Uh, you need to get that paint pack, uh, Adam, because uh, it's not showing that for me. <laughs> ah, OK. Ken Bullock Bassi is, def is um, very close to Samuel Libert now. So it's um, slightly falling apart for Libert at the minute. The Radicals man right behind him. Luke Bassi, who has had an uh, interesting season in the iRacing Road Pro Series, of course. I have to say, he'd probably be in with a shout of winning it if it wasn't for the collision where Mac hit him um, going into the Parabolica. Then he had his own incident at Spa, didn't he, as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of problem with the side pod, which uh, meant he was very toast. slow. And Jao Vaz. Down the, yeah, down the Kemmel straight, which meant he finished about 12th or 13th place. Managed to get a good result, though, last Saturday at uh, Imola should really confirm his spot in the World Championship if he has a good race meeting this Saturday at the Nürburgring. Berriman's closing in on this pack. This is going to become a five car. Pete was the quickest driver in practice. Not by a long way, but he has been quick in all the test sessions that I've seen him is in. And uh, as we know, his season one of the, um, of the Renault, the official series, Martin Van Lusenord won that title. Season two, Pete Berriman won it. So... A lot of um, you know personal uh, pride up for <laughs> grabs here, so I'm sure Pete will want to try and get up to uh, up to his teammate. And H um, Higlin is getting very close to uh, Martin up front as well. They do like some very good uh, some some bragging rights between the two, don't they? But yeah, who's going to come out on top here? If anybody, uh, Antoine Higlin then is uh, right behind my racing world championship driver, of course. Switching a bit further back, guys, sorry, all the way down to 32nd. Joseph Newman and Simon Hodge having a good little battle, coming into uh, Sunset Bend right now as well. Well, Newman's dropped down then, because he was in 27th place. Something must have ha happened to him. CQR, man. On this lap, he's just behind... Uh, that is... Uh, Thompson, is that Simon Hodge? Yeah, and Josh Thompson... Uh, way Hodge up the road from him. Thompson got some damage on his car. He was collected in that Ash Sutton incident at the start, but survived and finishing and finishing on the lead lap. We know how important that is, guys. That's the uh, that's the number one Thompson. key. If you've got damage, you've got to, uh, you've got to finish. What's this as well? In 20th, 21st, 22nd. So uh, Paul Denton and uh, Catalin uh, having a good little battle. Yeah, that and one's going to be close, maybe into the last corner. Sorry, Adam. 
Yeah, I was just going to say, Graz right with him, uh, going towards this right hander. Pretty hard to overtake into the corner, but he's going to try anyway on the, the inside. inside. He makes it look very, very easy, so I take that all back. And that is uh, Gra now through into 21st place. Denton driving for Faker, Simsport Europe down to 22nd place. Good move there. These, uh, Kevin the Balthazar right behind Rene Osterkamp as well. And he's pulled out the slipstream. They're going to be side by side, Balthazar and Osterkamp. Oh, oh very, very close. Into the penultimate corner. Oh, the, the last sector, sorry. And nothing changed between the uh, Davis and uh, Baxter battle that also flashed on our screen just for a short second there as well. Action all the way through the field in this BSR Formula Renault. Oh, crash! And it is uh, into the wall goes Chembola Bassi and Pete Berryman. Oh, oh, he? oh, no, he's hit. He's just hit Oscar Mangan. And uh, Pedrazzoli goes off into the wall in avoidance. Mangan, is Mangan disqualified? Now, there is an incident limit in this series. I think, oh, I very think Oscar's been disqualified already, you know. 11 incidents you, you get in this series. And it's got yeah, it does look like Oscar's gone. Six. Have a look, see what happened. Pete had a little look. Didn't nothing come off of it. Oh, Jem just loses it on his own. And Pete flies into him. Pete manages to keep going. His car is severely damaged. Oscar just flicks the car across. And unfortunately, <laughs> picks up a 4X and gets himself disqualified. Nothing he could do about that. Gutted for him. Well, now this means we've got uh, Apex UK, Apex UK and Apex Academy all at the front. So that's in reverse order. Losing all, leading the way for Apex Racing Academy. Second is Heglin and third Samuel LeBear. So, uh, Alex Viewers are going to love that one, aren't they? Yeah, you're going to have to hot foot it to the podium, I think, after this, after, <laughs> when the checkered flag comes, unless these three don't take each other out. Yeah, and then he'll be um, hot footing it to the pub, I think. <laughs> to the stewards room. <laughs> the stewards room. <laughs> What are we doing here? Um, Valor is not leading. Head of Antoine Eaglen. Holland versus France. And um, Alex, Antoine has had quite a lot of really good results in the, in the World Championship Series over the last couple of years. Oh, he has. Very consistent driver. Very, very quick. Um, currently studying at uh, uni and doesn't get a great deal of time to do an awful lot of testing. And still, he's very, very quick. So... Um, just showing um, showing how good he is now in pretty much every car he jumps in. Now go, it's starting to close up between Matthew Bunn and John Godfrey, although having said that, the battle here is between Christian Rose, Stephen Baxter, uh, Michael oh. Hall and Ralph Cullen and, and René Osterkamp. They're really nose to tail. Plenty of groups, yeah, having in this a field go, so far. It's Rose. Going into the final corner. The sunset bend. Oh, oh, spin! And Roster Camp's gone. Vector Sim Sport Group driver, pro Keeps driver it, as well. Uh, Spins he it does around a good and. Good job uh, of getting it around quickly. Yeah, he lost himself a few places there, but. That continues. Could have been a lot worse. Oh, yeah, exactly. We've seen people retire. So, Behrman and uh, Bullet Bassi out, Mangan out in that crash. So, you know, three of your pro drivers retire. Hedrazoli out as well. So, um. Yeah, four, four positions. The funny thing is, Osterkamp, he lost four places, and I think he gained four places due to the crashes. <laughs> Hasn't lost anything, still up 15 places. Daniel McCauley, he's one to have a look at, because he's up to 17th place. He started in 41st. Yeah, and back of the grid up 24. Game. Didn't get himself a qualifier in, did he? he and uh, Daniel does a bit of karting in real life, so, um, you know, knows his way around the racetrack. And... Uh, in many a way, the, uh, you need to drive these sprint races like a karting race. Get those places. Connections all over the shot at the minute, though. That's going to worry Kevin ahead of him. 25th in practice for McCauley. Didn't set a time in qualifying. Up to 17th and going pretty nicely. That's a um, They've got Paul Denton ahead of them. Has uh, just done a similar move to what he did a few laps ago. That's him up another place. He's up into... Uh, 18th place, getting past uh, Marcel Fritsch. We're about to start the final lap in the race uh, with Marcel van Luzenord leading Antoine Hegelin by just two tenths of a second as they come across the line. Yeah, that could be quite close. See them having to fight the car down to, due to the bumps. Going on at the front right now. Still Martin holding on three tenths of a second from uh, Hegelin. Yeah, that's, what, that's where we were. 
He's close though, he's got the slipstream. Might be able to have a look into the hairpin. I don't think he'll be able to have a go, but... Sizing him up for later. It is an overtaking spot down there. Too many that's that second half of the lap then. Fastest lap of the race is being currently held by Samuel LeBaire. That'll give him a few bonus points, but Antoine Heglin desperately wants this lead. Apex 1, 2, 3 at the moment. Academy leading the two UK cars. Alex, is it worth it going on board for this last sector with uh, Antoine? Do it. Team chasing down Van Luzenord. Worth pointing out that there's uh, there's no way um, Martin is an academy driver, but uh, he's in there as the uh, the representative pro, of course. An AM team is allowed one pro driver, so as long as uh, it's only one, then you can still be classed as a, as an amateur team. And uh, yeah, like the BSRTC. Exactly. Right. And Martin was um, yeah Martin come come to the party a little late, otherwise he would have been in the main team. I'm sure. I can assure Antoine you. Antoine didn't get a good exit from the final from the second to last corner. Closing in with the draft, but it's not going to be enough, I feel. Tell Le us Bear. about this last corner then, Alex. Sunset then. Well, it's really tricky because um, we know it's bumpy on the outside and very bumpy on the inside. And this Renault, you have to sort of go in the middle. You know, it's the only line where the car's not all over the place. But here comes Martin. Is that the last lap? That's, That's the, last the last lap, lap. yeah. It takes win. I didn't see the time run out. <laughs> uh, so... And uh, my yeah. point in case to the admins about the time timed races and not lap race, race. please. Yeah. Um, Godfrey close to um, Matthew Bunn. Will he get a position? No, a little bit wide in the final corner. So Bunn's going to hold on to uh, sixth place. Just for posterity, uh. then. Martin Van Lusenod wins round one of the season. There we go. I'll be <laughs> edited into the Motors TV podcast. I can assure you that. Hey, <laughs> Nathan Davis one stone. Nathan Davis, yeah, he comes across the line and takes 10th place. Uh, so a top 10 result for him. That is a gain of 29 positions. I told you, I told you before the start of the race he was going to be one to watch through, through the field. And uh, yeah, he backs up my point well with getting a top 10 result. Yeah, and that's, um, yeah, that's impressive. Going to factor well into the... If it's a small reverse grid, it'll play into the hands of the likes of uh, Nathan Davis. Could 29 places McC gained on my screen. Sorry, Could even be Daniel McCauley in 16th who gets that. Yeah, 20, um, yeah 25 places gained actually. for him as well. Still battling out on the circuit. Pierre Mignot. And it's not really a battle with Kip Stevens, but he's just ahead of him. Um, yeah, a mistake. We'll, we'll definitely see the... Although Kip gets a great oh, it exit. Be. It could be. Stevens. Oh. Can he get it on the line? Who's going to get it? Stevens. Oh, it is. It is Kip it Stevens. Is Stevens. By uh, two, three hundredths of a second, Kip Stevens getting 28th place ahead of Pierre Minier. And that could be very crucial if it gets to the reverse grid. I think it's just outside it, to be fair. But, um, yeah, if it's a fall, I don't know. Well, that was worth looking at in the end, then. Excellent. Joseph Newman, the last car on the lead lap to finish in 30th. And if we have a fall, assuming he didn't get this qualified, uh, it will be... Simon Hodge on pole position in 31st. He will also be the last point scoring driver, Adam, as well. Let's remind everybody, sorry, just to butt in there, that this is race one of four tonight. So we have yes. a reverse grid. We're going to spin a wheel in the minutes, in a minute. So don't go anywhere. All those people just thinking, oh, yes, it races over. Martin won it. No, there's three more. You're going to have to watch him try and come through from uh, whichever reverse grid we're going to throw in a moment. And, could be um, 16. Could be yeah, 26. so we've got four, three more races left to come. So... That's, uh, you thought that one was uh, enjoyable. Well, watch all those fast guys come through from the back. Yeah, don't go anywhere. Got plenty of action still to come. Adam, if you could take us through the finishing order then, and then we'll go about, uh, we'll set about finding a pole position, man, for race two. Okay, so Mike Van Lusenor takes the first win of the season, his first win of the season, and the first win and the first race of the season, Damien. That's really bad. Uh, Antoine Heglin finishing in second place. Uh, Samuel Lebert finishing in third with Fischali well, Scherges. Right. It's a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just <laughs> worded it very poorly. Uh, Pashalis Georges finishing 15 seconds behind the eventual winner. Uh, shows you how quick those guys were at the front. Forced to be reckoned with, those three. Uh, fifth, uh, fourth for David Baker. Fifth, Matt Bunn. Sixth for John Godfrey with Jos Honig finishing in eighth. Uh, Patrick uh, Bolster finishing in ninth. And Nathan Davis finishing in tenth. Cars that started inside the top ten that finished there. Uh, the top five did so, but... All the rest, uh, they are all good comebacks through the field. Nathan Davis finishing in 10th, as I said. Michael Hall finishing in 11th, 12th for Ralph Cullinan. 
Uh, Christian Rose finishing in 13th place. 14th, Stephen Baxter. 15th, Paul Denton. 41st to 16th for Daniel McCauley. Another great fight through the field there from him. Rene Ostercam finishing in 17th. Kevin Balthazar finishing in 18th. Catalan Grau finishing in 19th. And Marcel Frisch finishing in 20th. Mark Pickford finishing in 21st place. James Nash dropped down the order. We saw him uh, go off at one point during the race. Uh, he finished in uh, 22nd place. Matthias Sponholtz finishing in 23rd with Alan Mitchell 24th. Dave White 25th. Josh Thompson in 26th. Uh, John uh, Mutchinson finishing in 27th with Kip Stevens just edging out Pierre Minier in 28th and 29th respectively. Uh, Joseph Newman finishing in 30th and uh, Simon Hodge one lap down in the the car that we have to watch out for when it comes to the reverse grid. George Ratch is two laps down along with Pete Berryman and uh, Chen Barlett Bassi. Uh, Tan Guy uh, Pedrazoli also two laps down. Oscar Mangan three laps down, finishing in 36th place. Uh, 37th for Jack Keefley. Tell you what, race two is going to be interesting to see these guys fight their way through the field. Uh, Lawrence Derrick finishing in 38th. Ash Sutton 39th house on lap one of the race. Tom Depke finishing in 40th. Alan Morgan 41st and Ash Blake Hood seven laps down finishing in 42nd place. Thanks very much, Adam, as usual. And um, Alex is standing by with the Wheel of Fortune. We will spin the wheel wherever it lands between 16 and 26. We will have a pole position. And the bonus, Alex, is two full segments on there as well. The full will go to the last point-scoring driver who didn't get disqualified. There we go. Right, here we go then. Where will it go? Corley, Osterkamp, Ocazar, Grau, Fritsch, Pickford, Nash, Sponholtz, Mitchell, White, and if we have a fall, it will be uh, Simon Hodge. So who's it going to be, Alex? Right, it's going to be a small one this time, just 17 reversed. And uh, Rene Osterkamp then will be on pole position for race two of the season. Neil McCauley starting second, Paul, ben Paul Denton starting in third, Stephen Baxter fourth, and Christian Rose will be starting in fifth place for race two. I just right. want to explain to everybody as well what happens if we get a full. People will be thinking, oh, it's all full 40 odd cars, but it's the, all the point scorers are reversed. So anyone just uh, one lap down who sc will score points. So um, yeah, don't expect to see a full and then have like 43 cars reversed. Unless, of course, everybody finishes. But this is true. You know? Everybody finishes on the lead lap or one lap down, then yeah, um, which we have had a couple of times. And. Um, what Just um, also want to point out that league registrations are still open as well. The way this series works, um, there's a couple of drop rounds in there, a couple of drop weeks that we've got. And um, uh, because it's such a long championship, there's a long time to get into the uh, showdown as well. So you can join sort of like week three, four of this championship. This is week one. And, uh, you know, you can still get yourself in there. You can even get in on a wild card as well if you win a couple of races whether it be in an amateur class or on uh, the pro class, where well, you can still get yourself uh, in as a wild card as well to the showdown. So lots of opportunities still to uh, sign up. So we're fully expecting to try and get 60 cars on the grid. That's kind of like the, the goal that we want to go for. So 43 tonight, not a bad little start, but we'd love to see another uh, another 17 on there. Indeed. So, well, 42 cars will take to race two. And we'll see exactly what's going to happen with that as the reverse grid takes effect. And after this break here on Apex Racing TV and I Racing Live, we'll see you back at Sebring in a moment.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software. It can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. Welcome back to Sebring here on Apex Racing TV for the iRacing MSA British Sim Races Formula Renault Series in association with Apex Racing League. Uh, Andrew Woodhouse, Adam Bath and Alex Simpson with you and Adam I'll bring you in first this time my friend. Um, it was in quite an eventful first race really, a lot of the front runners somehow managed to, to take each other out. Yeah, they just got whistled lower and lower, didn't it, as, it, as the race went on. We only ended up with three at the end, and then a huge 15-second gap back to the cars behind. It was a bit of an monopoly by Apex Racing, uh, with Martin Van Lusen all taking the win. Had a fantastic start, and there he is, spinning in uh, the warm-up. Got a fantastic start from second on the grid. Got the jump away from the line, and was able to uh, hold on just to bounce and take the first win of the season. We'll see who's able to get it in the second race. We've got a relatively small reverse grid here. Yeah, we have, and um, that's the beauty of the reverse grid wheel, Alex, for the people who've never tuned into us before. You know, obviously we welcome them along, but yeah, the reverse grid wheel, three times we're going to spin it tonight. Um, we've had one already. This is going to shake the order up quite a lot, isn't it? Yep, reverse grid always does. Let's see how these guys get through. Just eight laps this time. It's uh, The admins have switched it around for us, which was uh, grateful. And um, yeah, so not a lot of time to... Um, to find these places, so I think uh, the challenge is going to be get yourself into a position where you can get a reasonable reverse grid position, I think, <laughs> for the next one. Well, it's all about fighting your way back through the field. Yeah, we'll notice see. Sorry, go on. I was just going to say, notice how the track temperature's gone up now we're in race two. It was 20 uh, in the mid to high 20s in race one. It's now 41 degrees race two. 
Yeah, yeah afternoon sun. conditions, sun is out, so they won't be quite so tentative on those uh, first laps now. Tyres will get up to uh, temperature and pressure a lot, lot quicker. Just want to give a quick shout out to GT Omega, who are uh, sponsoring this race as well. Thanks, um, guys. Putting, them, putting up um, two rigs, two steering wheel um, stands, and... Uh, Two office seats as well for the uh, for the members to win here. So um, yeah, awesome uh, prizes uh, up for grabs. Thank you to uh, GT Omega. Yeah, we do have to mention hot on the heels of the previous race, um, which was sponsored by Precision Sim Engineering. Um, they will be offering a wheel to um, prize draw effectively to one of the drivers at the end of the season. And that wheel, did you say two and a half thousand pounds? I think? Yeah, retails at two and a half thousand pounds. So amazing prize that they've, um, they've put up there. So Simon from Precision Sim Engineering, thank you very much um, for that as well. Yeah, and thanks to GT Omega, long-time partners of ours on Apex Racing TV. To see them back on one of our broadcasts again. We'll be doing the draws for uh, whoever's going to win that at the Sim Expo in uh, Germany in September, October time. Yeah, that might be um, could be quite an interesting experience of that. It's all going to be revealed uh, sooner rather than later, I think. And so, time to look at the grid then. Yes, we do. Tony Osterkamp starting in pole position then. Daniel McCauley second. Third, Paul Denton. Stephen Baxter starting in fourth. Christian Roast in fifth with Ralph Cullen in sixth. Michael Hall seventh. Nathan Davis eighth. And Patrick Bolster and Joss Hosnig Honig rounding out the top ten. John Godfrey in eleventh. Twelfth, Matt Bunn. Thirteenth, Dave Baker. 14th, Pashali Jerzis with Samuel Lebert, 15th, Antoine Heglin in 16th, and race one winner Martin van Luzenord in 17th. Kevin Balthasar, 18th, 19th, Talan Grauer, and uh, 20th is Marcel Fritsch. Mark Pickford in 21st, James Nash, 22nd, Matthias Bonholtz in 23rd, Alan Mitchell, 24th, Dave White, 25th, 26th, Josh Thompson, 27th, John Mutchinson, 28th, Kip Stevens, 29th, Ian Minier, and uh, 30th is Joseph Newman. Very much, Adam. Big names starting down the field as well. Pete Berriman in 33rd, Cembo Bassi 34th, Tange Pozzoli in 35th, Oscar Mangan 36th. Not over for those guys for this week. They need to get themselves back into that reverse grid position. They can still score lots of points for themselves and the team. Here we go. Green, green, green. Green light is on again. This is round two underway. The poor start from the second row by... I think it was Paul Denton who's dropped back a little bit side by side into the first corner between Rene Osterkamp and Daniel McCauley. McCauley who had a brilliant first race, somebody running wide onto the grass. It looks like everybody's got through the first corner safely. Will it be the same four turns two and three here? It's very tight, it's a little bit of bumping going on. But be careful in there people. I have to say guys, I'm amazed. I really am. I expected oh! to see them ploughing into Bassi. each other. Pulling Bassi off. He lost it. He's back on. Not having a good meeting so far. Hopefully it turns around for him. My name's Cust certainly going to be in the Racing World Championship next year, pretty much. Newcast deciding to start from the pit lane uh, for race two. Just wanting to make sure they get around a complete lap. Quite a safe option, that really, isn't it? Oh, everyone storming into this right-hander. Uh, Samuel LeBears at the mercy of Bolster here. Patrick Bolster, and he's got um, Matt Bunn for company as well. Bunn trying to go around the outside for into this 90-degree right-hander. Well, Matt Bunn's not going to give up at any positions in a hurry. Goes Whoa, round the outside. Oh. Oh, brilliant driving by Bunn. Big old twitch. Really, a couple really of drivers oh, having a twitch and around. Finn, there's a team man car oh. around. And an Apex car around as well. I know oh, it's not. It's, it's David a White. And Dave White's for Team Mad. David White and was that Fritsch? Did you say myself? Yeah, it was, yeah. Yep. Rene Osterkamp then. Oh, crash, it's an Apex car. Uh, it is James Nash and also it is Antoine Heglin. I can see the smoke. Oh, and a, so one car's had a, a Pedrazzoli has gone for a huge ride. The virtual driver's car's lost the front wing, the rear wing, everything pretty much. Oh, he vaulted, over, he vaulted over the back of... Uh, is it Berryman, I think. I think it might have been... Uh, oh, and then he got clobbered, I think, by Bullock Bassi as well. So, Chem's luck continues. Might have been Van Lusenort, but yeah, as they come across the line... Oh, cars all going all over the place again. Well, it's just the damage for this the race, the that's for sure. Cars all What's over the place. What's happened to Osterkamp? Where's running Osterkamp? I think he's crashed. He's in the pits, yeah. He's got no front wing. 
next he's to out. Sim Group. What happened to him? Oh, he's in the final oh, corner. He crashed on his own. Oh, look at that. Into the grass. Oh, into the grass. Towards the inside. That was his race to have. He was pulling away already. Now it's a Great. battle up front. Pretty wide going into the hairpin here up the inside goes Stephen Baxter. He wants that position. Oh, and he's hit. Oh. He's just hit Paul Denton. <laughs> and that's going to allow Baxter now through into second place. Third, Nathan Davis. Fourth, with Baker. Baker in that CQR club car trying to get in the mix. Dave hey, Baker, BSR TC champion, season seven. Oh, somebody's trying to make it three wide in front of them. I think that's Ralph Cullinan. And it, it obviously didn't work because spun round is bolster is it bolster i think yeah these guys just uh this is the first experience they've got of the reverse grid we just got to be a little bit more patient they were patient on that opening first sort of three quarters of a lap and then it's just all gone to pot you know there's uh there's a time and a place and just got to work this out there's a lot of damaged cars uh coming on out there bolster are going to pull it up i think he uh he might be uh might be done Daniel I mean, McCauley is away Oh, yeah, 2.5 second lead for uh, Daniel McCauley. Davis and Baxter continue their battle as we head down the long back straight. Catalan Grauer, problem uh, for them. They're dropping down the order. Oh, great battle quickly. about further back. Baker and um, Baker. Baxter. Baker up the inside into uh, Sunset Bend. Baker has to take the inside line much shorter, a little bumpier than the middle line taken by Baxter. And then just behind them, Samuel Liber and Michael Hall. A lot of CQR cars in here as well. Ash Sutton's made a reasonable start as well, he, as he usually oh, does. Baker oh. wide and onto the uh, dirt. Trying to recover. LeBear goes straight past. But um, Burgess as well, moving up past um, Holt. So good drive through for himself and, um, and LeBear. Where's our winner from the last race? Usenor down in 28th place. Don't know what issues. He's had, but well, he he's started, certainly struggling. He started 17th, Alex, so he must have had something go wrong. Looking like he's got some front wing damage on um, his car. But he he important thing for Martin, to stay out there and um, you know get those points. Mark Ash, Pickford. Ash oh, Sutton up 17 that, places. Bullock Bassi again into the wall. Oh. He's not having the best of races <laughs> at all. Smashes it hard. That was uh, He was having a battle with uh, Pick, Pickford there. Well, Pickford's now in the mix with Josh McHutchinson. Pickford's having a look on the inside. Josh we'll defends see back the line. The replay. Kevin Balthazar just ahead of them. Um, I was saying Ashley Sutton's up 17 places from the start. He started 39th, he's up to 22nd. Also moving through is George Ratchis in that beautiful Renault uh, old school form, the one livery there. Oh. Um, 15 places up. Even Baxter's say. gone. Oh, Baxter around. Baxter's we just caught the spun. tail end of that. But um, last corner. Jim got absolutely nailed there. It was none of his own That's doing. It, just um, I'm pretty sure. I think it was Pickford who just swiped across, but absolutely blasted him. So he was very quietly having a hell of a meeting so far. Is John Godfrey, Alex. He's up to. He's about to take 14th place away from even Baxter into Sunset Bend. He's through John Godfrey. Yeah, great job. One of the um, amateur drivers out there as well. Tell you what, that's the si he's one of the biggest success stories of the Apex Racing Academy that you can find is John Godfrey. He's turning into a hell of a driver. Another academy driver on the move, Josh Thompson getting past Matt Bunn. So that's Thompson up to seventh place, Bunn down to eighth. We have the up and coming teams in the uh, Sim Racing World, Apex Racing Academy in the CQR team. The CQR making some waves as well. Of pointing out as well, all these incidents will get looked at post race meeting as well. There is an official protest form that the drivers can send in, and uh, the admins will take a look at all of these incidents. And uh, penalties will be awarded it could be times penalties, it could be pit lane start penalties, it could be points penalties you name it. Um, but they will dish them out, so don't think any of this is going away. Whoa. Um, getting away with it scot free, they're um, yeah, they're gonna be <laughs> get stung for this. Oh, up the inside goes, um, go, yeah, goes Pash on uh, on Davis. Davis looked like he was gonna take second place for a while, but uh, yeah, wasn't able to get it done there. And Davis uh, down to fourth place now, Samuel Lebert up to second, the gain of 13 positions for Samuel Lebert. 
And so Pete Berryman oh. up to ninth past Christian Rose. And somebody's just had a brown trouser moment. I think it was, was it? Uh, Baker, I think. Is it Baker? Yep. yep. Baker, who was in his favourite position, sixth, just loses ah. it there, allows Hall and uh, Thompson through. Can't be losing sixth like that, Dave. Come on. Another driver recovering well, Jack Keithley as well. He was out early in the last race. And um, Keithley, who's back been, up a, to been a main feature, hasn't he, in the Pro Series? Yeah, in doing very well. Missed the first split. few rounds, didn't he? And he was in the second split. But um, yeah, trying to drive strong at the moment to see Bon Holtz is there as well. Place. Oh, here he goes. Fantastic. Bon Holtz <laughs> through the middle in the Bron GP car. Well, going to try and go around the outside, the Irishman. Oh, he got sideways on the bumps. Just what Alex was talking about. It's a bit treacherous out there. You get marbles on the outside as well. Gap's coming down very, very quickly, guys, at the front as well. We've got just four laps to go. 1.1 second is the lead now for uh, for McCauley. LeBaire coming at him very, very quickly. Side by side down. between uh, David White and Oscar Mangan. Oh, White Nash is dropping that. down the order. James Nash, I think that could might be... a disqualification. Be, uh, yeah, it could be a disqualification or an internet drop. Disqualification. Ah. An innocuous 1x. That's it. Uh, That's him done. 11x is the, is the limit. I was going to say that, the, yeah, the gap's coming down visually between McCauley and Samuel LeBert. Eight tenths of a second on this lap. Last time around, 201.789 for McCauley. Uh, to uh, to zero point five one eight for Samuel Lebert. Now, what McCall is going to want is he's going to want Pashalis Jurgis to um, to put pressure on Lebert, isn't he? He'll, he'll really want to uh, just get a little bit of breathing room. That might be all he needs with only three laps to go at the end of this one. What a brilliant start to the BSR Formula Renault Series here on Apex Racing TV. Andrew Woodhouse, Adam Bath, and Alex Simpson. We're going to be with you all year until September. The, fin the finale will be the Sim Racing Expo of the Nürburgring. Boy, up we can't to, wait for that. Up down um, to four tenths of a second now. Mistake there for. Um, was that a mistake from uh, LeBaire? Oh, here comes Jurgis. Oh, yeah, Jurgis is waiting. Jurgis is just waiting behind his teammate. Right, can McCauley hold on for three laps? It's going to be a tough ask for him. Apex Academy driver with the two Apex UK, the big boys right behind him. Michael Hall versus David Baker as well. That's for... Oh, he's going for it straight away. Seventh. Oh, here, here is, comes the bear. The bear for the lead. He's through. And here comes Pascalis Jurgis. On the inside, let the brakes. Goes through the Greek driver. Excellent work. Connection problem for uh, Dan. Let's hope that that doesn't drop oh. him. That would be a disaster for him. Oh, Davis has now got coming up towards him. Can't see where he is. <laughs> Nothing worse when you're following someone like that. The Davis is action packed at the best of times without following a car that's oh, blinking God. all over he the place. He just could appear in the middle of him, and oh, um, there he goes. Dan makes a mistake. You see, just don't know where he is. Comes up behind his teammate, Josh Thompson. Almost so. appeared inside the car of Josh Thompson. So Michael Hall. Oh, side by side between Baker and Berryman. Who's going to have the line here? It's going to be Baker, but Berryman goes around the outside. Doesn't quite have the grip. Baker might be able to get the cut back. Berryman disappears. And again. See, that's, that's so frustrating. Oh, off. That's McCauley, is it? Yes, it is. That's going to allow Michael Hall through. So the CQR car position side by side in front of them. That's Thompson oh, versus Davis. Oh, he's um, really Davis. struggling. And you can see Berryman just having to drive almost a completely different line, Adam, to um, just avoid the possibility of appearing oh, next to Oh, they're right McCauley. next to each other as well. I'm sure that um, McCauley will be in team speak oh. trying to um, get himself out of the way. There he is again. Now, I've heard, I've heard people in the past say, oh, you shouldn't talk about things like this on a broadcast. Well, this is this is part of it. This is what you have to contend with in sim racing, just like your engine blowing up or just like a, I don't know, loose wheel nut or something, Alex. Yeah, exactly that. You know, you can have little connection glitches and things like that. And it's a right headache for the drivers around him. 
both hit, both Berryman and uh, McCauley seem to have settled down. Was there contact somewhere? I just heard. I heard some contact. Yeah. That could have been McCauley's car going in and out of, in and out of the ether. I'm not sure. Actually, Blake could under a little bit of pressure right here. He's trying to hold on to 18th place. Not sure he's going to do that. Kevin Baltazar, maybe around the outside, just a little bit too far back. We get a good exit out of turn one. Get that Blake shoot down defense. and into uh, the tricky left-hander. Blake could defence the inside. Michael Hall's just had an off-track moment. He just lost the car. He was in fifth at the start of the lap. Actually, Blake Hood's going to be part, part of our broadcast team this season. We look forward to seeing him in the Club 73 Touring Car Championship. He's going to be streaming that for us at some point. 24 positions today, Ash Blake could, so an eventful race too for him up way team. Could be beneficial to him when it comes to the reverse grid for the third race of the day. Oscar Mangan versus Joseph Newman. EQR versus Apex Racing. That seems to be most of the field. Whilst that's going on, Pete Berryman's just got past Nathan Davis, so Apex UK driver up to uh, fourth place now. It is kind of a joint venture, this, Alex, isn't it, really? I mean, I, I know that um, there we sort of mostly formulated a lot of the ideas behind it and then... Exactly. CQ, Got CQR the BSR and, and the CQR guys involved as well. So that, you know, I'm not surprised, you know, it was... Doing a grand job. Uh, it was our baby, really, wasn't it? So I'm not surprised there's a lot of Apex and CQR guys out there as well. So, but... Uh, Fun yeah. fact for everybody, this idea was dreamt up in a pub in Germany. There we go. Who, say, who says that the um, who says alcohol doesn't breed uh, good ideas, Alex? Yeah, exactly. Was, uh, was it a pub or was it we were at a house party at the time? I can't remember oh, when well, it was when it was drunk top. There was lots of, of alcohol being but consumed. I know that. All way, Macaulay. If you ever if you ever go drinking with the Coanda Sim Sport team, don't trust their multicolored liquids <laughs> in strange spirit bottles. A lot, of, a lot of ideas get thought up in pubs in Germany. Those of you that study German history, I'll, I'll talk to you about that later on. But <laughs> Macaulay and uh, David Baker Thank battling you. away here in the last, on the last lap of the race now. Yeah, it's very close. Macaulay was leading most of the race. He's going to be annoyed that he's dropped down to fifth. But here's Baker in his customary sixth position. He's got Jack Keithley behind him. Keithley's very, very quick as well. Can he get through on Baker? Baker positions his car beautifully, though, as he normally does. Keithley goes... Oh, he got, Baker goes a bit wide, Keith has got a chance to get back. But this section's really just one line. Oh, oh Keith he going one way, then the other. Sells him the dummy up the inside, Jack Keithley. Oh, and Baker almost runs into him. Let's try back around the outside, it's David Baker. He's oh, getting he's still, squeezed. He's going to come back on there. the inside. This is brilliant driving. He's still side by side, David Baker. Keithley trying to hold it. He can't. Baker's through. Wonderful driving. Now it's just two corners to go between Liber and Churges. Harriman getting past Thompson. Samuel Liber, Pascalis Churges. Who's going to take the win? It's going to be a 1 2 for the team. Let's see if Liber. Can take this. Oh, Jurgis had a look at the sunset, Ben. He's going to go the short way Ooh. around. Doesn't want to run into him. He may have done. <laughs> I was, I was, I was getting ready to jump team speak channels there. <laughs> Here goes Samuel Liber across the line. He wins round two of the BSR Formula Renault. Oh, McCauley and Davis, that's close as well. Thompson, Those just, the oh, Berryman got and, um, Thompson on the line for third. Baker Sorry, gets. Alex, that was like two different things. At no, once. no, there's just stuff going on everywhere at the moment. Let's see if we and can find some more battles. And Keithley got Baker as well, so Keithley managed Did to he? get David Baker as well. Um, uh, David White, Rich, maybe. Rich versus Denton. Side by side into Sunset Bend on the last lap. Rich on the inside, Denton on the outside. Who's going to take it? Cars twitching around on the bumps. Denton's got the short run to the line. It's going to be Fridge. And Fridge is through. He takes it. He'll be happy with that. Kip Stevens coming across. Finishing the race in 30th. And Joss Honig with no front wing. Fair play. Finishing the race on what's effectively a go-kart now. Goals points, doesn't he? That's the important yes. thing, you know? That's what we're saying. Um, you know, the drivers will soon learn this. But, you know, scoring points in every race 
is going to get you that showdown position. So even if your car is like this and you think you can survive and get it around and finish just the one lap down, you stay out there and you um, you get those points. And big I'd names bit the dust in that race, Adam, I tell you. Yeah, just looking again, Ash Sutton, two horrible races for him. Chembo at Bassi, not having the best race meeting either. As Honey comes across the line, he will be the car that will be on pole position if we get a full... Usually race two and race, the reverse grid between race two and race three, sometimes that seems to be the place where we get the full. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens there. But, yeah, Joss Honig, 31st place. At least his feet will be uh, well ventilated as he goes around his <laughs> cool-down lap. Can I just point out another so. thing? It's not all about the showdown anymore, is it? Finishing and getting points. Every point gets you a raffle ticket for a prize at the end of that season. You know, so. when you've got £2,500 wheel rims, and Leo Bodner V2 systems up for grabs, you know, full rigs, you know, every point is worth having. You know, that, that's, a, that's something to keep in your back of your mind, isn't it? When you're trundling around there trying to get that point, it's like, oh, this is 50 entries to get me a Bodner, you know? <laughs> yeah, and that's a big old prize, that. Yeah. Um, big, big prize. Well, then, Congratulations to uh, Samuel LeBert. Takes the second race, so good, um, yeah, good couple of races for him. That's what he wanted at the start of this championship. Well, if, if you include everyone under the Apex banner, it was a one, two, three, four, five, six. six. Possibly seven, eight, if you really dig deep on that one. But yeah, um, what can we say? <laughs> Adam, take us to the finishing order then. Well, Samuel Levert takes the win then. Second for Pachali Georges, only half a second behind in the end. And yeah, uh, very close to taking each other out going through the final corner. Uh, Pete Berryman gets third place after starting in 33rd place on the grid. A gain of 30 positions for him. That's probably, I think that is the joint highest along with uh, a certain Jack Keith. 4-4 Josh Thompson, Nathan Davis 5th, 6th uh, for uh, Daniel McCauley, 7th Jack Keefley, Dave Baker finishing in 8th place, just losing out after a fantastic battle between Keefley and, and himself on that final lap. Matt Bunn finishing in 9th and Christian Rose running out the top 10. Uh, cars are started inside the top 10 that finished there, we only had 3. 11th, Matthias Bonholtz with Michael Hall finishing in 12th, Ralph Cullinan in 13th, Stephen Baxter 14th. Uh, John Godfrey, 15th. Mark Pickford finishing in sixth, in 15th place. 16th, uh, no, Mark, pa Mark Pickford was in 16th. 17th was John McCutcheson um, with seven, in 17th place. 18th, Ash Blakehood. 9th, Kevin Balfassar and Dave White rounding out the top 20. Uh, Martin Van Lusenord uh, had issues at the start, but was able to get back to 21st place after starting in 17th. Oscar Mangan, 36th to 22nd. So uh, a good second race, and he might be able to compensate that 22nd place uh, with a, uh, a better race in race three, hopefully with a reverse grid for him. Uh, Castellan Grau finishing in 23rd, 24th, Joseph Newman. Uh, Tom Depke finishing in 25th. 26th for Paul Denton, started third. Uh, Marcel Frisch in 27th. Pierre Minier starting in uh, finishing in 28th place. 29th, Alan Mitchell and Kip Stevens in 30th. 31st, Jos Honig. And then uh, two laps down or more. These cars all score zero points. George Ratchis, Simon Hodge, James Nash, Lawrence Derrick, Chen Bowl at Bassi, uh, Patrick Bolster uh, with Ash Sutton in 38th. Alan Morgan, 39th. Antoine Hegelin in 40th. Rene Osterkamp in 41st. Uh, the man that started on the pole and uh, Tangai Pedrazzoli finishing in 42nd place. Okay, so we did have quite a few casualties there, but then um, Alex is now going to make someone's evening, or possibly give them the fright of their life, I don't know, by putting them on pole position for race three. Take it away. Now, here we go then for the second time tonight. Where will the uh, Wheel of Fortune land? While well, we've um, got his attention, Mr. Blake Hood, I have a uh, Formula Renault one. Oh, ho, ho. Look what's loaded. We've got a pull for the second race. How about it, boys? Congratulations, Joss Honig, then. You're going to be starting a pole position. Kit Stevens starting in second. That'll be a welcome break for him. I think he's finished outside the top 30 uh, the last two races, the first two races of the day. Alan Mitchell starting in third. Pierre Minier starting in fourth. And Marcel Frisch starting in fifth. Tell you what, this is giving all five of those guys a brilliant opportunity here. Yeah, and um, Honig Stevens um, it might be the best, definitely be the best place to be on this circuit, I guarantee you. Um, one of those two might be able to make a break. Let's see if they can when you join us back here on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live in just a few minutes' time for race three of the evening.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back to the Air Racing MSA BSR Formula Renault Series here at Sebring. It's round three of the season. And Andrew Woodhouse, Adam Bath and Alex Simpson are bringing it to you. Um, Alex, once again, you fixed the wheel. You drew a fall. I do and, like uh, pulling those falls out, don't I? <laughs> the, the fall has been quite prevalent recently. And um, yeah, what are you expecting from this race with 31 cars reversed? Uh, just more of the more of the same sort of madness i just hope like i say the guys just give themselves another couple of laps to settle in i know you can't really sort of dilly dally around but they need to a little bit they need to be a little bit more patient than they were that last one i don't know if you take us through the top 10 please hey joss Alex starting on pole position kip steven second alan mitchell starting in third yeah mini air starting in fourth with marcel fritch in fifth sixth denton seventh tom uh depke eighth joseph newman ninth uh, Catalan Greer and starting in 10th will be Oscar Mangan. Very much, Adam. Last race winner Samuel Libert will be starting in 31st place. Waiting for one car. No Kip Stevens. No Kip Stevens. It's going to be chaos. Good luck, everyone. Green, green, green. The green flag flies again. The third time in the evening. Josh Honig got a good start off pole position. Kip Stevens didn't take the start, so it's Alan Mitchell who's got the inside line into the first corner. Round the outside is Pierre Mignot from the second row. Mignot oh. into second place, then it's Alan Mitchell, then it's Tom, then it's uh, Tom Depke. Someone's Langer, around. Pickford's oh, around hey. and into the wall heavily. There's a few other cars, some carnage going on. Higlin. Involved in something as well. And Luzanor just got shoved off the course as well. He's back on. I'm not sure that was Martin. I think that was somebody pin. else. Two drivers jockeying for position into the hairpin. Looks like oh, most car people into the hairpin. In. Who is it? I'm gonna find it. Ralph it Cullinan. Is. Ralph Cullinan. Yeah. Oh, it's still oh! trying to get wing. Goodness me. Bolster has to take Bolster. evasive action. Oh, and a few cars are going wide at the hairpin, outbreaking themselves and finding a, a stationary car. Lawrence de Reich is uh, one of those having to avoid. Oh, and he's out, pulled off to the side. So, I'm not sure with him, with his car. Daniel um, McCallany, after his uh, great race the last time, unfortunately um, out. It's supposed to show how quickly the uh, series can turn, and that will happen time and time again John Godfrey had a something and got caught on involved and maybe got some damage because he's just got grass tricking lead battle Honig Mitchell in here taking the no, lead Minier, sorry uh, oh second. car in the wall is it Van Luzenod no it's not is it McCauley I'm not sure it's a could be Berryman whoa oh, look at this oh no we it's got... not it wasn't it was uh, there's a lot there's a lot Tom, of Tom Depker. Tom Depka was in the wall. And we've got, um, oh, this is, this this is not going well. Baxter, men. Baxter, Sponholtz, all battling their way through the final corner of the Braun livery. Oh, no! Oh, round! Davis. Davis. Nathan Davis. Oh! Oh, who was that who just avoided the pit wall? Depka. Depka again. It's going to be bad to worse for him. Van Luzenod chasing down Paul Denton. Just behind them, is there going to be a move into the hairpin for McHutchinson? No, there isn't. Oh, Keithley having a look on Sponholtz. That's for uh, about 15th place, I think. Sponholtz in 15th. Keithley in 16th. Luzanor trying to get past Denton. He's up the inside there into the hairpin at the end of the straight. And Luzanor now into 6th place. Yeah, Minier still leads. Oscar Mangan in second. Third, Josh Honig. Fourth, Catalin Gra. And then Alan Mitchell in fifth. And Van Luzenord in sixth. Van Luzenord going down the inside. Can he, can he make it stick? I can indeed. He positions in two corners. Good work from the Dutchman. Paul Denton then just behind them in sixth. Seventh, Ashley Blake Hood. Then it's David White, Kevin Balthazar, Josh Thompson and Matthew Bunn. Or Matt Bum, whenever you seem to switch the camera on, he's in some sort of battle. Always and forever, I think, with Matt Bum. Benton getting past Mitchell and also up the inside is Ash Blake Hoods. Oh, Bunn's trying for it. Locks up. Almost clobbered into the back of Josh Thompson. Oscar Mangan's now leading. What's happened there? What happened to get the, the Apex car into the lead? 
exactly what You've happened. Got to find just that got back a bit earlier on, actually, in the lap. Oh, just got a better run out of the uh, out of the previous right hander. Around the outside, we saw Pete Berman do something similar to uh, Jack Keithley. Better so run takes there, it. Adam, I think. We'll switch back to um, this battle with um, Alan Mitchell, Stephen uh, Stephen Baxter. Well, Honig has got passed by Grauer, so Grauer up into third place. And getting ninth driver. to first. Yeah. And Van Luzenord, Paul Denton, Ashley Blake. Look at this now. Alpha Zavi Thompson. Thompson up the inside. Yeah, up into ninth. Thompson. Up 19 positions already, Josh Thompson. And then you've got Stephen Baxter there as well at the back of this group. A bit further back, you've got Samuel Libert, race two winner. But behind Jack Keithley, and that's for 16th place. Baxter having a little bit of a look, also just in front of them, you can see... Oh, locking up! Who was that locking up? That was Matt Bunn trying to get past Balthazar. Almost succeeding, and now here comes uh, Baxter with the Apex car. Also in the mix there as well. This is very close going Mitchell towards the right hand well. well, No, he doesn't. Mitchell fights back. Antoine Higgelin up to 20th place. Ashley Sutton up to 21st. But they're making a good move through the field. And Bolluk Bass has had issues again. That's not gone smoothly for him. In, uh, so the drivers we've lost so far, we've lost Simon Hodge, Tange Perizzoli, James Nash, uh, Peter Berryman, Pascalis Georges, Joseph Newman, George, uh, Joseph Newman's still running actually, it's been damaged I think, we've lost George Ratchis, Lawrence De Reich, and Daniel McCauley. Oh look at this for second place right now, Martin Bra. thought about it, he had the best run, decides not to um, get involved. It's Grauer versus Minia versus Van Luzenod. Van Luzenod's got a fantastic run here off the final corner. We could be about to go three wide down the front straight here. Hold on, folks at home. Into oh, here we, we go. go. Grauer up the inside, but around the outside will go Minia, the German. Van Luzenod. Got a run. He might go for this on the inside, Van Luzenod. Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh you what? That's brave. Very, very brave, but very, very well executed. Martin Van Luzenod. Good awareness Holland. from everybody else around there as well. They could have squashed that down and could have all ended up in a big pile, but they decided to uh, continue racing. Great battle between Grauer and Mignot. That Keithley dropping down the order. Don't know what's happened to him. Uh, but yeah, here comes Grauer and Mignot then into the hairpin. Oh, getting forced out very there. Very close. On the uh, behind, all oh, is having to think about this as well. These guys have got past once, but while they're battling, he's fighting oh, back. Honig, he didn't want to get off the gas there, did he? But he had to in the end. That's where the track narrows down a little bit for this right-hander. Oh, off. off. Minia. And that's going to allow Honig and Grau through, and this might allow uh, Ash Blake Hood and that Team Mad Car to get into the equation as well. Yeah, here Blake he comes. Going to try Straight up the yeah. inside. Easy pickings, Alex, that time. Not yeah, all no going to be as easy as through. that, but you'll take it. Austin Van Luzenord just uh, to look at the lap times. Fastest lap of the race last time around. He was uh, about four tenths of a second quicker than Oscar Mangan, but with four laps left, I don't think that's going to be enough for him to be the leader. That's a question for you, um, Mr. Simpson, as well. Is um, You were going to be driving in this league originally. Um, having seen tonight's action, do you, would you still have fancied it? <laughs> um, um, I'm gutted I'm not in there right now. There's no way, there's no words can describe. You know, I've been enjoying driving the Renault with the Academy guys. I really wanted to run this series. Oh, well. Hopefully we can sort it for you. Get me in the booth instead. Hmm. Well, I mean, I was going to say, you've got you no one to blame but yourself. Going to make do with us yet again. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> Thompson oh, having mate, a look for a no, move. I, I, That's I'm sixth place. For you, actually. I was looking forward to seeing you have a bash at this. But um, you never know, you might be getting into some race at some point during the season. Well, often you and me get to commentate on Alex these days, isn't it? No, not at all, really. Race Spot have got exclusivity on that one, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you signed a deal we didn't know about. That's it. <laughs> 
over yeah, his naming all, rights. It all makes sense now. That's it. Yeah, he's, oh, he's look, right. Um, what's going on here? John Hutchinson running an Apex livery. Interesting, I have to with say. Al with Alan Mitchell. <laughs> um, yeah. Dinner, dinner. Batman livery. With the, well, it's a Red Bull camo livery, actually, for Alan Mitchell. Um, McCutchinson. He is a pro sim driver on our graphics, but he has got an Apex UK livery car. There we go. Different. I know it's a good, good livery. It's a very good livery. <laughs> I like that one. Nathan Davies coming under pressure from Bolster, and Bolster's flying at the inside, and he's going through. Patrick Bolster. Oh, not quite. Nathan Davies uh, on a comeback through the field after uh, having that 360 degree spin on the exit of the final corner early on in the race. Never dull around the uh, around the Welshman, is it, Alex? No, uh, not at all. Um, Higlin and um, Baxter against. having a, a good little battle as well, coming Bolster's, into the final Bolster's sector. Going through. He's through. Sorry, yeah. Switch back to that, but then we'll go back. Just the conclusion of that, and then. Um, oh, car over. But they got back going again. Was that Depka? Depka's yeah. race going from back Biglin to worse. into sunset. Sorry, guys. Back to that battle and uh, completes that move. Baxter not defending it too much, just couldn't quite get the run he needed. So Higlin up to uh, 11th place, he's got Dave Baker ahead of him. Paul Denton is side by side with David White going into turn one as well. That's also, off, yeah, dropping Denton. down the order. David White on the inside in the team mad car. He's through. Josh Thompson he, and King. Uh, Honig, Maddox, sorry, what's it? Oh, David White nearly off. He saved it. Um, yeah, Adam Team Mad won the Club Series uh, Team Championship, didn't they, in uh, 2016? Yeah, with Diogo Melro. Uh, they're going to they're going to get another position here. It's actually Blake cut up the inside of Jos Honig, and a team that's really coming to the fore now. They've had pretty good uh, season the last few years. They've been on the up in the Club Series, and yeah, they were able to take the team teams championship but not a few seasons ago. Definitely, they have done here. well. Oh. Almost similar to the rise of Pete Newman Media in the BSR TC. Great drive from uh, Josh right now as well. So holding in sixth place, not really done anything. Um, I think he'll do well to hold on to that. But I think actually he's going to end up with a top ten here, considering where um, you know his previous race. He's fourth. Uh, he's oh, he's fifth at the minute. Sorry, isn't he? He just oh, just no, lost to six. Yeah, yeah, just lost oh, to sorry, six. Sorry, Josh. Sorry, not Josh. Sorry. But uh, yeah, Josh having a good uh, a good race as well, up uh, 23 places. So I'm struggling to find where to look on this in this field, mate. I tell you, so the much going on. The Cutchinson and Matt Bunn are battling now. This is over 14th and 15th for uh, a tussle between a Pro Sim and a CQR club. I was about to say an Apex and a CQR club, but yeah, McCutchinson and Matt Bunn together there, and then Matt Alan Mitchell Bunn. still there. Bunn just had a horrible final sector, didn't he? And um, he just let McCutchinson go get away. Oh, He's uh, further Balthazar back as well. Went. Tom and uh, Tom and Kevin. Baker's um, off. Baker's off, is he? Oh, yeah. Baker around. He was passing with Higlin. He'd just been passed by Higlin, actually. We're going to see him in a minute, I think. Oh, he's just got going. There he is on the inside. We're going to see that battle between Kevin uh, Balthazar and Tom Depka. Just in front of them, you've got now... Uh, oh, Bunn. And uh, it's coming under pressure from Mitchell. It's all happening here in the BSR Formula Renault series. Oh, car stationary. Joseph Newman, is he dead laps down, is he? One lap down. Needs to stay on the lead lap and needs to stay on that one lap down, though. Not to get right. those points. Be all right. Oh, Minier's dropping down a few positions. He's just dropped down to... He's continuing to drop down positions. He's down to 10th place now. I don't know what happened to him. It must have been a oh, he spin in a hairpin. He spun oh, at the exit of the geez. hairpin. Just switched his camera back up and there's loads of cars checking up into the uh, into the hairpin. So Dave Baker, um, Alan Mitchell, Matt Bunn, uh, Balthazar, Sutton's in there. Sutton's going to finish a race, guys. <laughs> <laughs> up the inside goes Baker. That is a move. That is in pass well, Alan he Mitchell. Is. That's one of the series organisers, isn't he? He'll be open. he finishes some of the races, I think. Kevin Balthazar's had a, a bit of a, uh, oh, oh, a Sutton. Race. Sutton down the inside. Where on earth did he come from? And Battle. he's got Mitchell. And he might and get another one. Get, 
Depco as well. Not. That's what scrapping does uh, to your time. To be fair, Sutton, one of the things that he's brilliant at, for those who've never seen him race before. Oh, be careful, Sutton. Dear me. Oh, he's gone off the, <laughs> off the curb there. Uh, he's not brilliant at riding curbs with the with the plank underneath the car, which um, I don't think anybody is. But no, he, he's very, very good at taking, he'll take any overtaking opportunity possible, won't he? But here comes Kevin Balthazar. They've got a battle on their hands. Very wide down the straight here into Sunset Ben, then who's oh, going to come out on top? someone else as well. <laughs> Sutton suffering with uh, damage to that wing, it I think it's slowing him down. Wall, oh no, it was just the bump. 1.6 oh, seconds is the gap. We're on to the last lap. It's not going to be enough. Mangan, I think, just does a, uh, a good race here. He'll be fine. Good lap, even. Sutton versus Bolster. Yeah, Sutton used to racing cars like this. He raced in the uh, Dunlop MSA Formula 4 Championship. As uh, we might have lost oh, Minier again. He's around. Oh, yeah, and he's going to lose another place to McCutchinson. He's down to 13th place now, the man who started in fourth on the grid. Sutton's got a nice run onto the back straight. And be able to have a go at Patrick Bolster here. Bolster's got the slipstream from Balthazar, though. So Sutton's going to have to be last of the late break, as he is known for that. The Jack Sears Trophy winner in the British Touring Car Championship last season. Oh, yeah, and he just, that's a wow. great move. If he can make that stick around the outside... That's Sutton. Wheel to wheel. we being wheel. asked about the reverse grid. We will pick that up um, once we've, this race is finished so everybody knows and understands the rules. It's all in the rules. But, um, yeah, we'll explain it when we bring the wheel up this time so people understand how the fall works. Because the fall isn't yeah. a fall. You have to be um, oh, Oscar's coming one lap down. Corner, Alex. Oh, he's that far ahead. Yep, he is. Yeah. <laughs> Oscar Mangan. Round the final corner. Coming through and he takes the win in round three. Head of Martin van Luzenod. Katalin Grauer in third. And it's going to be Thompson and Blake Hood. Just ahead of um, Joss Honig. And then Antoine Higelin taking uh, seventh place, the Frenchman. David White in eighth, ninth. Paul Denton and tenth Pierre Meunier. What's still going on? Oh, Bolster and uh, Bolster and Sutton side by side in the last corner. Alex, that's going to be really close, mate. Yeah, who's going to get that? I think uh, Sutton suffering with straight line Sutton. speed. Oh, that was so close at the line. Sutton by uh, 22 thousandths. Have a look, they're still battling down the field. This is what's great about this championship. Christian Rose, Michael Hall. Uh, oh, Chembo Lukbasi and Kip Stevens wow. going at it in the final <laughs> corner. Stevens going through, but Lukbasi with all sorts of problems there. Damage and, oh dear, just not having a good afternoon. Good evening's work for Chem. Marcel Fritsch negotiating Sunset Ben for the last time. He's had a poor race, starting from fifth place. A decent race in race one. Yeah, race three not going to plan for him. That's going to be 30th place for him. We're just waiting on Alan Morgan now. Yeah, Alan Morgan. Going to be 31st. Joseph Newman did finish one lap down, so he will be in contention for the full reverse grid. And also, he will uh, score some points. We'll wait uh, till Alan Morgan crosses the line, because that might get updated to two laps down. Depends Good what point. happens. Alan Morgan just coming through the final corner now. He'll get the last car on the lead lap, which is first, will be 31st place. And is Joseph Newman going to be credited as one lap down or is he going to be demoted to two laps down? He is, uh, he's still going to be a lap down. So yeah, he's still in contention. Yeah, so to confirm the rule then, as it's being talked about in the chat right now. So the full reverse grid only counts um, if, it only counts for people who are eligible to score points, which means you have to be one lap or less down. Um, so if you're two laps or more down, then you're not eligible to score points which means the fall doesn't count for you. So if that fall happens to be last place actually stays within two laps of the leader, then it's a fall. But if you've been disqualified or you've been, you know, you wreck out or anything like that and you don't finish within that area, then you will not be part of the, uh, of the reverse will, I'm afraid. That's uh, a BSR rule. It's been like that for, uh, for, yeah, for a very long time. So 
Um, yeah, don't think, oh, I've crashed and I can, um, you know, I'll sort it. I'll just hopefully get a fall the next one. If you can drive around at a reasonable pace with a damaged car, do it because it's points. It's points for the yep. championships, points for the showdown, it's points for the entries, for the prizes at the end of the season, and it gets you a chance of getting a reverse grid. Yeah, because what what could have what could potentially happen, as has been rightly pointed out by um, our racing Grand Prix Series champion Jamie Fluke on the chat. It does stop people deliberately crashing at the start, which, you know, you'd like to think that doesn't happen, but I'm pretty sure that it will if it allows you to just, you know, crash and then potentially get a full. So there you go. It definitely works. There's the rule. And um, that's how it stay. Right. Um, Adam, take us through who survived that latest melee then. Oscar Mankin takes uh, his first win of the season. So uh, Apex Racing Academy won. Apex Racing UK uh, 2. Yeah, All the way had... around. Is it? How many races have we actually had so far? Tonight? I can't even count. This was the end of race 3, wasn't it? Um, Martin Van Lusenor finishing in 2nd place. Catalan Grammar finishing in 3rd. I was just saying, in terms of wins, it's 2-1 uh, oh, now to Apex UK. Uh, yeah. Uh, Josh Thompson finishing in 4th. 5th, Ashley Blake Hood. 6th, Jos Honig with Antoine Hegelin finishing in 7th. David White, 8th. Paul Dent in 9th. And Stephen Baxter rounding out the top 10. 11th for Samuel Libert. 12th uh, for John uh, McCutchinson. 13th for Pierre Minier with uh, David Baker finishing in 14th place. Matt Bunn, 15th with Tom Depka finishing in 16th. 17th, Kevin Balfasar, Ash Sutton getting an 18th place, getting a 21 uh, positions for him. Patrick Bolster finishing in 19th and Alan Mitchell in 20th. 21st for Ralph Cullinan, 22nd for Nathan Davis, 23rd for John Godfrey with Mark Pickford 24th, Rene Osterkamp in 25th, 26th for Christian Rose, Michael Hall finishing in 27th with Kip Stevens 28th after starting on the front row of the grid. Well, in fact, he didn't start on the front row, he started from the pit lane. So a pit lane starts at 28th is still a good result for Kip Stevens. Chen Bolok Bassi, uh, he finished in 29th after starting 36th. However, his car was all sorts of mangled as he came across the line. Marcel Fritsch finishing in uh, 30th after starting in 5th. Alan Morgan, uh, the last car on the lead lap, and Joseph Newman, the last classified finisher. And as Alex was saying, was saying, he'll get the pole position if we get another full reverse grid. Jack Keefley, four laps down. Matthias Bonholtz finishing in 34, five laps down, along with uh, George Ratchis. Lawrence Durick finishing in 36th place. Simon Hodge, 37th, seven laps down, along with Pedro Zoli. James Nash, Pete Berryman, also seven laps down. Uh, Pashali Sergis also seven laps down, and Daniel McCauley also seven laps down. So uh, it may have been an Apex Racing UK one, two, three earlier, but um, an Apex Racing UK final three um, at the end of at the end of race three. Yeah, and um, could whisper it quietly, Alex Simpson, but it could be a um, clean sweep for Apex Racing UK tonight. Well, it'd be nice, I have to say. You know, we uh, I'm not going to shy away from uh, from obviously putting out there a good team. We, we, we put a team out there to, to win this series, you know, that's what we wanted to do. So um, this is the perfect start. Of course, we've got a bit of a head start on some people because we've been doing this car for a little while. Um, and I don't think it's going to stay like this. I think um, once the guys get a little bit more up to speed, these grids are going to get closer and closer and closer as well. So um, for the guys, this is what they need to do. They need to get good starting, bang a load of points in while they can now because come sort of midway through this season, oh, I think it's going to be on. Well, if, if for some hope for the, the rest of the field, um, this is the first race this season where it hasn't been a complete apex sweep, sweep of the podium. Well done to Cattle and Grauer getting ProSim up into the top three. Now we're going to see who's going to be on pole for race four. Here we go then, where's it going to end up? I do remember guys, at the end of the season, this, um, this reverse grid wheel was banging out a lot of falls and that was kind of why uh, Ashley Blake could change it. So, what are we going to get again? What do we reckon? Well, so, Ashley Blake way could way. count the uh, reverse on fall position, so I'm sure. <laughs> well, it's not going to be a fall, that's for sure. No Richard will it be Gorbusson either. Will it be 20th? No, it's going to be 22nd this time around. Nathan Davis, so the Apex Racing Simulators car gets put onto pole position. Oh, it's the Apex Racing car. This is what it is. Uh, Graf Cullen is starting second, Alan Mitchell third, Patrick Bolster fourth, and Ash Sutton. Good opportunity for him to make his mark on the championship in the first race meeting of the season. He's going to be starting in fifth place. Yeah, we'll 
We'll see how he gets on in just a few minutes time here on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. Stay with us here in the iRacing MSA BSR Formula Renault Series in association with the Apex Racing League because we've still got one race left to come and that will follow just after this commercial break. So we'll see you in a bit.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car. And we're back on Apex Racing TV from the Sebring International Circuit in the United States. Andrew Woodhouse, Adam Bath and Alex Simpson. 
bringing you the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Formula Renault Series in association with the Apex Racing League. Now, um, fourth race of the night, Adam, and uh, the third reverse grid spin. It brought us an interesting result, didn't it? Yeah, so uh, Nathan Davis is going to be starting on the pole position, the Apex Racing uh, Sim Yulator's driver. But he's going to get a chance to show he's made of. Ashton, got to watch out for him. He's definitely going to be quick. He's going to be starting in fifth place. Had a good third race, was able to keep it clean, and he's in with a shot now taking a win here. Just to say, uh, we've spent, we've had a nice day in Florida. We were in Daytona uh, earlier today. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we've just moved now to Sebring for, for the Formula Renault, and we've had a treat here so far, far as well. Two words for you, if only. I wish. <laughs> that would be, be lovely. I hear Florida is much nicer than, um, than, than Britain at this time of year, but, you know, uh, it is what it is. And, uh, but we've seen some great racing, both at the beach and here in Sebring. Um, of course, we had the Rickma Tech Sports Car Series this, in the early hours of this morning, and that went beautifully well, the first meeting. Um, this race four is brought to you by iRacing, sponsoring this one. So thank you very much for their continued support as well. Because we literally and figuratively couldn't do it without them. No, absolutely not. $5,000 worth of credits they put up for this series. Jesus. You know, pretty impressive. So uh, we've, um, just so the guys that are watching know what we've done with that, the, it's basically a participation credit that we've put together. So if the guys turn up to all but the drop races, and um, yeah, they'll get $100 worth of credit. Not bad, eh? There you go. That pretty much reimburses the, the good, subscription um, almost. Yeah. yeah, good half of the entry fee, or roughly that, anyway. Well, and down to the grid. Nathan Davis starting on pole position for the fourth race of the day. Ralph Cullinan starting in second. Third, Alan Mitchell. Fourth, Patrick Bolster. Fifth, Ash Sutton. Sixth, Kevin Balthazar. Seventh, Tom Depka. 8th Matt Bunn, ninth Dave Baker and 10th Pierre Minier. Then uh, John McCutchinson starting in 11th, 12th Samuel LeBaire, Stephen Baxter 13th, Paul Denton in 14th, Dave White 15th, Antoine Heglin starting in 16th with Jos Hen Honig starting in 17th, Ash Blake Hood in 18th, 9th Josh Thompson and 20th Catalan Gra, 21st Martin Van Lusenor, 22nd Oscar Mangan, 23rd uh, John Godfrey, 24th Mark Pickford and then running out the top 30, Osterkamp, Rose, Hall, Stevens, Bollock, Bassey and Frisch. Right then. Just moments away from C. Who's going to take race green four? Green. green light is on very quickly. A decent start from Davis. Who's that from the second row? That's Ashley Sutton making a wonderful start. Wow. Already up into third place. Fourth, well, potentially third if you can get round on the inside oh. of Patrick. Oh, Bolster's lost it. Oh, and the front two have gone. England's Nathan into him. Davis and Cullinan. And there's a oh big word. crash. There's a pile-up here. Safety there's car, a, surely. There is a pile-up. Oh, Safe. over goes uh, George Ratches. Where's the safety car? Samuel LeBaire's leading. Oh, they fall wide. They're still crashing. There's four drivers off. Oh, and again. Oh, who's that? Oh, well off the track there. I haven't seen it. Oh, hey, that's got to be one of the worst starts we've ever seen. Oh, off a good other car. It's uh, it's losing odd. But he's got no front of the car anyway. But he's oh. he's carried on. He's going to be in about ninth place. Uh, here comes Ash Susson. He's going to try and get the lead back from Samuel LeBaire, who's got obvious damage to the front of his Apex Racing UK car. Right, LeBaire versus Sutton then. LeBaire already with the race win under his belt. Sutton hasn't got one. Only with one finish under his belt, but he did get a nice uh, a nice roll of the dice in the reverse grid, and he's got a great run here on Samuel Lebert. He's going to try and overhaul the Frenchman into the fast left-hander flat-out section. This button cuts across, Ashley Sutton into the lead. The Jack Sears Trophy winner takes the point now. And look at this, Bun, Mangan and Thompson. Baxter was also to get. Oh, look at. Oh, who is that with Matt Bun? Dear me, what has gone on with your car, mate? There. Literally, it's as if a piano's landed on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, oh. as they head down the straight, here comes uh, another Apex car. It's Oscar Mangan. He wants to get past Josh Thompson. Tell you what, Oscar Mangan and Ash Sutton, probably the only two clean cars in the field after what we saw in turn one. I have to say, I am surprised there was no safety car there. You would think um, it would have come out. I don't know where the uh, league admins are. Needed to be called. 
I don't know, maybe they've fallen asleep. Maybe they were watching the um, Rikmatech series this morning. <laughs> maybe like me, they're a bit short on the old shut eye. Into the first corner, we've got Baker, Pickford and Davies. Oh, the Bear's in trouble. He's lost a ton of ground to Sutton and... Oh, Sutton's in the wall! Oh, no! Ah, Sutton's in the wall! Jack Sears Trophy winner has binned it. He he what happened? Now, no, he did not. We're going to take a little look on replay, see what happened. Oh. Oh, Stephen Baxter leads, second is Oscar Logan. Unbelievable. Ten ball at Bassey's third. What? Well, he's fourth now, from, he's just been passed having, by Thompson. But yeah, from, he's, from he's having up 26 positions. From having absolutely no look at all, to having all the luck in the world, and we're not even at the end of the second lap yet, and he's up 26 places. Oh, well, sorry, 25 places, but it will be 26 if he can go around the outside of Josh Thompson. And he has done. Chembo, look, Bassi. We said he's done quite good form. Well, I'll tell you what, finally oh. getting a chance to show some of it. But Shali Zerges is dropping down the order like a stone. He's involved in, I think, a big crash he's here. Crashed What's as happened? Well, he's he's gone into the right hander, battling away with a pro sim car. Oh, oh dear. Rejoined pretty dangerously and almost took out Kip Stevens. We had we had all three. We had oh, all three off. Apex had all three the of Davis the Apex racing off. branches in the wall. Yeah, we had this Apex Sim team, the Apex UK team, and the Apex Academy team all crashing together. Alex, in all in all seriousness, from a driver's perspective, could anything be? You know what what's what, what might be causing this? Well, there's a combination in this one. Of course, we're late afternoon again, so the car is the tyres are very, very slick, uh, which is not going to help matters whatsoever. And I think people have just lost it through turn one. Um, oh, they're jockeying for position right now as um, well. Sutton and White, and then behind them it's three wide between Osterkamp, Liber, and. Uh, and someone else I also, um, I also feel it's just a lot of. Uh, you know, a lot of it's a new league. People need to sort of pull down the inside, bed in a little what's bit, and see exactly what's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, I have to say the um, I'm, I'm sure the guys will be asking questions of the admins there because the track was completely blocked and it really did need a safety car being um, pulled out from it. So I know some of them do jump in the races as well, but it's pretty easy for them to uh, for them to type it in. Are on the subject subject of um, Ashley Sutton. He's got away with very, very little damage at all, if any. Yeah. He might have just dodged a bullet there. He's in sixth place now, Ash Sutton. Uh, he is six seconds off the leader. Maybe about eight seconds, actually. Uh, but, yeah. Front wing, very, very, very uh, pristine there, considering he, it took a whack to a tyre wall. Got a tiny bit of front wing damage, I think. That's it. Everything else looks pretty much in order. Um, side by side between Matt Bunn and Osterkamp. Matt Bunn goes through. Oh, Osterkamp fighting back though. Side by side with the CQR car. Tony Osterkamp not giving up despite rear wing damage. Gonna go through, he is. Well done. Good move there. John Godfrey up in fifth place. Oh, sorry, sixth place now. I think he's just been demoted by Ashley Sutton. No, you're right, still in fifth. Oh, sorry, it must be fourth, Sutton then. Bullock Bassi in third, Mangan second, and then Stephen Baxter is leading by two seconds. It's a bit less than that now, it's 1.3. I'm guessing lebert has got massive suspension for um, failure, so he's just going to be limping it home. Five laps to go, then Ash Sutton up to fourth. Stephen Baxter's a one second lead. Where is Lebert? Oh, three wide down the straight here. Eleventh now. Oh, Matt Bunn up the inside. Bon Holtz uh, battling away with White. Braun versus Team Mad hit. White's going on the inside. Good overtaking spot into this left hand hairpin thing. Very tight section. This Alex is quite tricky to get right. Uh, it is. And it's just uh, it's just a case of um, hit one of those high curbs and you're absolutely toast. Yeah, you've, especially one of these single seaters. Still side by side between um, Osterkamp and Pickford around as well, Thompson. I think. Oh, Pickford, over. where was he? Just recovering down in 19th now. 
take a little look, see what happened there. Yeah, Some damage Cushing. already on that car, but as has most people in this particular race. Into um, sector one, someone runs a little bit wide. Tell me he's not going to rejoin the track, and no, he doesn't. Ah, right, Pickford just loses it on his own. Coming out of, out of the, the, um, the first sector. It's tricky through there. It is easy to drop the car there. And Mangan takes the Mangan's lead. He's just through. got past Stephen Baxter. Yeah, so Apex Racing UK back to the lead here with uh, the second. Uh, Oscar Mangan, who um, his, his pro series, let's face it, has been one to forget. Formerly our Racing World Championship driver, of course, and um, took a win earlier on tonight. He may be on for his second here, but it's too early to say that because Chembolik Bassi could be a big challenge for him. The Radicals online. Yeah, Chem just gets himself up and past um, Baxter as well. Oscar Mangan win race three. Won race two? Race two. Oh, no, it might have been three. Yeah, it was no. three. Yeah, so he, he might be on for back to back race wins here. It was Van Lusen on the first race. Lebert then race it was Lebert. two. Then it was, yeah, then it was Mangan. But yeah, back-to-back -back race wins could be in the offing here for Oscar Mangan, especially if uh, Bolet Bassi and Baxter continue to battle over second. Yeah, apologies to the viewers at home. We we suffer from something called too many races syndrome, where we um, we just forget who's won even the last couple of races that we've seen sometimes. Oster Camp v Thompson uh, now battling away, and that is Oster Camp uh, through Thompson. Oh, oh Thompson's Thompson. coming back. Brilliant stuff to fight back. These cars twitching all over the place in these conditions. Really on the edge of adhesion in the cold weather. This is pretty much, Alex, as fast as this car will go around a lap in these conditions. It can be a little bit trickier. Like I'm not sure any car's going as fast as it possibly go. They're all damaged out there. <laughs> That's <laughs> <is> true. <laughs> but uh, yeah, close to it with the, uh, <laughs> with the overcast conditions. I think Oscar um, might be doing pretty well. I don't think he's got any damage on his yeah, car. Yeah, 58-1, and Jim was a 58-0 the last lap. So Ooh, Thompson lying. up the inside. Great and scrap. Oster Camp just being able to hold on. Can he keep it, though? going to be the question. Through the final sector. Hey, what? It looks like somebody chap has just sat on the right-hand side of Oster Camp's <laughs> car. It wasn't me, I, was I the, promise. <laughs> the other side looks like it's all fine. It's just right hand side on the rear wing. I was sat but on yeah. one side, you were sat on the other, and that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. That's our knowledge of aerodynamics um, summed up right there. Three laps to go. <laughs> um, but look at that though, it can't be, it can't be good for it, that's for sure. Have a look at the oh, lap time this then. time oh. by... Oh, somebody's in the fence. Oh, oh. he's come back on the track. It is uh, Patrizzoli. Now, what happened to him? I don't know. He was already... He was in 12th place. Tried a bit yeah, of no off-roading. Oh, dear. Yeah, tried a bit of off-roading, and then, um, yeah, the car just speared off to the right into the wall. So he, I wonder if he just lost the nose cone or whether he'd, he'd been... No, like he had that for quite a while. I spotted that earlier on, so... Just looking at lap well times, Oscar tenth and uh, well, need two tenths quicker that lap, so pulling away actually from uh, from Gem right now. Uh, cars that started inside the top ten that are still there, only one, and that's Ash Sutton. Oscar Mangan up twenty one positions. Even he did his best to um, try to not finish in the top ten by crashing into the wall. Biggest mover, definitely Chem Bolup. See twenty seven positions gained. John Godfrey up to fifth, Alex. That's um, that's brilliant for him. He'll be pretty high up in the championship standings after tonight, I would say. Oh, John, I would think so. Good, consistent, um, you know, races. Four points. That's the that's the name of the game. You know, I can't keep going on about that enough. Tell you what, I like the um, I like the metallic gold wheels as well. Very very nice indeed. The chrome wheels. Been good for Mr. Godfrey. Now, Looking at David White, he's closing in on Josh Thompson now as well. Josh seems to have similar sort of damage as what LeBear's got, I think. Just that damage front, on the front it? wing, which is just slowing the car down massively. What will that do to the car in practical terms? Well, I think it'll, it's causing a lot of drag, so I think physically they're slower in a straight line. So we'll see this now when White comes onto the straight. But it doesn't seem to be affecting too much through the corners, but... I guess it's just pushing a little bit, but we'll see the Do difference in straight line speed now, I feel. Would that affect him through all the corners, Alex, or just, say, the right or the left-handers? Um, 
As through goes White. What it should do and what it actually is doing, who knows? I think it's yeah, yeah. the uh, it's the situation there. But Josh Thompson now into um, eighth place. I think we've lost John McCutchinson, you know. Oh, side by side, also. Uh, Ashley Blake Hood and Joseph Newman all dropped out at the same time. Simon Hodge versus Kip Stevens, 21st and 22nd. Oh, I think those three are all, battle there, actually. I think those three all got disqualified because they're not being shown as in the pits. Okay. Lost Catalan Grauer as well. Catalan Grauer in the pit lane. Yep. Back uh, there. Baker make, making his way up. Has Baker got some damage? Yeah, Baker's got damage too. He's tucked up behind his teammate Hall. So. Lap time's massively close between Mangan and Bullock Bassi last time round. 157.463 for Oscar Mangan and for Bullock Bassi 57.493. Now it's the fastest lap of the race by Oscar Mangan as well, so he's not holding anything back in the final two laps. No, and, he, he, and I'll tell you what, he can't afford to either with a driver like Chen behind. Got to push for everything he's worth. We've seen how one mistake can affect the standings at the end of the race. In, in pretty much a lot of times this week. Here comes uh, Michael Hall trying to get past James Nash. We haven't seen a lot of James Nash uh, tonight. We saw him get disqualified earlier on and crashed into once, but yeah, we've not seen many good things from him. And um, one of the biggest movers of the, of the evening, up to 14th from 39th on the grid. There's some getting... slight damage on the front again, though. Oh, in fact, so there's uh, Michael Hall, actually. Here, Here he comes, comes up the ball. inside. Got late on the brakes for uh, Hall, but gets the move done. These two are ahead of Dave Baker. Ball into 14th place. James Nash 15th. David Baker in 16th. If you can't finish 6th, at least finish in a position that uh, has a 6 digit. There we go, you see. All planned out. Ah, close battle. Samuel Libert and Joss Honig. Honig's going through. Alex, you were right. Libert's car is pretty much... Looks oh, like his car he's is pretty toast. Pretty much a sitting duck. He's about five seconds a lap slower at the moment, but he's just sort of limping it around, I think. But he's got um, a big gap behind him, so he'll probably make it round in this uh, 12th place. We, we know the point situation. Um, currently, provisional leader. Um, so a 12th place is, is going to be a, a good clutch of points as well, you know? So it's not going to do him any harm whatsoever. Pretty sure that's where he'll finish unless he has a disaster. It's all pretty static at the front, although Mangan and Bullock Bassi are. Crazy to Brady think we've lost times. half the grid in this race, though. It really was a bad, bad lap one. No one Awful, giving, no one giving any room. No one checking up or anything like that. Just you know, twenty that'll, cars still running out of the forty-two come. that oh, started. Mangan with connection problems on the final, uh, coming into the final sector, settles itself back down. But that would have been a before. squeaky bum moment. He's done that before through there as well. Hopefully it stays intact because he's only got Sunset Bend to go. And as the sun sets on the first meeting of the BSR MSA Formula Renault Championship. And uh, Jim had a little spin, just yeah. to a uh, little half spin. One man has risen to the top, and that is Oscar Mangan. He takes his second win of the evening in the Formula Renault 2.0. Cembo Lukbassi, a welcome finish for him, let alone a podium in second place. Third, Stephen Baxter. Fourth, Ash Sutton. Good result for him in the end. John Godfrey, he's going to be ecstatic with that, I reckon. Rene Osterkamp, likewise, in P6 from 25th on the grid. David White coming across as well. They're still battling um, out there, oh, yeah. actually. Bunn, Hall Ball. and Nash. So we've seen how Sunset Bend, it's not a done deal if you're going in front. Nash is trying the, the, the cut back. He might work here. We're looking for James Nash on... Michael Hall. Oh, it's going to be close. I think Hall's going to take it, but it's only just. Oh, sorry, it yeah. was Bunn. They swapped positions on the last lap. Sorry, Hall and Bunn. It was Matthew Bunn who just pipped James Nash. It's oh, Stevens. still going in the background as well. Hodge by side. and Pickford, Stevens. is it? Uh, Stevens oh, by... Sorry, Stevens, yeah. 
Uh, two hundredths. Never done with Kip Stevens around, and um, yeah, another and really close finish for him. Paul Denton, the last car across the line in 20th. Uh, Denton, dented, uh, but finished the race. All that matters. Yeah, and I think that's, and as, just going back to Stevens quickly, I think that's about the second time today he's been involved in a photo finish. Well, Adam, this is the first time for quite a while that when you read out the finishing order, yeah. The um, list of retirements is actually longer than the list of finishers. We don't have that often these days, but this time it was a, partic it was a particularly big um, carambolage on the first lap. Race of attrition, yeah. Now definitely be one uh, they might want to, well, maybe for the drivers they don't want to watch back when it's on Motors TV in a few months' time. But Oscar Mankin takes the win then to complete the sweep for Apex Racing UK. And Oscar Mankin is the first repeat winner in the Formula Renault Series this season. Chen Bullock Bassi, 29th to second place, again at 27 positions. That is the most out of anyone. Uh, I think a few drivers have lost more than that, actually, by crashing out. Stephen Baxter finishing in third, fourth, Thrash Sutton, fifth, John Godfrey, 23rd to uh, fifth place, again in 18 positions for him. Rene Osterkamp finishing in sixth, that was again in 19 places. Dave White finishing in eighth, ninth, uh, Dave White finishing in seventh, Josh Thompson finishing in eighth, Christian Rose in ninth. And uh, Matthias Sponholz finishing in 10th position. And as we said during the race, cars that started inside the top 10 that finished there, only one. And that was Ash Sutton, uh, who was leading briefly before going off. Starting 5th and finished in 4th place. 11th for Jos Honig. 12th for Samuel LeBaire. 13th for Michael Hall. 14th for Matt Bunn. James Nash, 39th to 15th. A gain of 24 positions for him. David Baker finishing in 16th place. 17th for Mark Pickford. Kip Stevens, 18th, 19th, Simon Hodge, and 20th, Paul Denton. And then we get into the retirees. These cars all scored zero points because they were uh, three laps down or more. Uh, Joseph Newman, 21st, uh, started in 32nd. So, um, yeah, he retired late on. Ash Blake could, uh, 22nd. 23rd, John McHutchinson. And Guy Pedrozzoli, 24th. Alan Mitchell started third on the grid, 25th. Uh, Catalan Grauer, 26th. Yeah, Minier in 27th, Nathan Davis, the pole sitter, 28th, Alan Morgan, 29th, 30th, Jack Keefley, six laps down, uh, Marcel Van Lusenor, 31st, seven laps down, and all these, the rest of these cars are pretty much seven laps down as well. Pashali Sergis, Marcel Fritsch, Tom Depka, Antoine Heglin, Kevin Balthazar, Ralph uh, Cullinan, and then the cars that were eight laps down, the ones that pretty much retired on the spot after what happened in turn one and turn two. Patrick Bolster, George Ratchis, Lawrence Derrick, Pete Berryman, and Daniel McCauley. There we go. Pretty exhaustive list of trashed cars. Um, Alex, is it worth having a little look back at that first uh, lap incident? Well, I showed it a couple of times on replay oh, anyway, so I think... Um, no, that's all right. Yeah, just a bit, shamed enough. bit of a carnage uh, moment there. Unfortunate, really. But, like what, I said though. earlier on, the guys will get more used to the league, how it's all going to work and things like that. They're just not used to being in a position where the quicker guys are trying to belt through from the back straight away. And everybody just needs to have some extreme patience in those first uh, first few laps. You know? Well, the first lap at least. Um, you know, turn ones and two, when they're really tight like they are at um, Sebring, you know, you've got that wide open... that. Sort of narrows down as on the exit, and then that's an extremely tight sector at Sebring. So, um, I'm just trying to think where we are for the next week. We're at uh, Zolder. Zolder. So, actually, that's not a bad. Um, it's not a bad one as long as I don't hit each other going down the straight <laughs> off the line because we've seen some absolute shockers in that situation, haven't we, Andrew? Oh yeah. Um, oh, Zolder. Uh, this big was that Nathan Davis? It was a V8 supercar race. It was oh, well, one and, was. Yeah. One so, was a, a touring car race, but then one was, um, I surely won't mind, Trevor Johnson. Yeah. Oh, that was terrible. Getting but one of the worst starts I think I've ever seen. After <laughs> that, yeah. it'll be all right. You know, it'll, there's quite a way before you get to that first chicane, so it'll filter out nicely, I think, before that. So we should have a little bit less of that. And I it's think the guys will, guys will um, calm it down a little bit for next week. But I, this is what we expected. This is the BSR. It's what it's all about, the reverse grids. You've got to... You've got to learn to sort of um, drive around the wrecks kind of thing and try and not get involved with them. And you've got to expect the worst. You can't expect it to be clean on that first lap. You know, there's got, you've got to expect there to be cars everywhere. And this is 
uh, drivers are going to have to uh, adapt and adjust to that. You know what, though? What we do need to talk about with you, um, especially since um, you know, you're mostly responsible for a lot of this league actually taking place, um, is how pleased... You know, how pleased are you with that? Because I, I love that meeting. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, uh, you know, the racing was great, generally all round. Um, that's what you want. And a nice good turnout for the first race of the season as well. Um, yes, you know, I did put a little bit of this together, but it doesn't happen without the, um, well, without you guys here as well in the comms. And then people like Kip Stevens, Laura, Barn, Laura uh, Bond, Matt Barn, um, Ash Sutton as well. They're all working behind the scenes, um, the BSR crew. So, um, it's a team effort, really. Yeah. Um, Adam, first impressions of the BSR Formula Renault then? Fantastic. Can't wait for it next week. Yeah, same here. Um, and I think I've had a very, very long day, so I think that's about how long. Um, that's all we've got time for here tonight. But um, we will be back with the BSR Winter Series from... Road Atlanta. From Road Atlanta, sorry, yes. On uh, That will be Thursday evening here on Apex Racing TV. And then, of course, all the um, all the wackiness starts at the weekend. The final round of the iRacing Road Pro Series will be on Saturday at 1.30pm as well. Join us for that. Find out who's going to take the 10 World Championship licenses. Right, from all of us here then at Sebring, from myself, Andrew Woodhouse, from Alex Simpson and Adam Bath, it's goodbye from here. And it's goodbye from the BSR Formula Renault Championship. We'll see you next week.